Hi everyone. Well, it's my great pleasure to join you today to share what we've just come back from, an Enchanted Lands new foundation, new beginning of Unity Consciousness. Our first trip away in quite some time and <laughs> we went to the Azores. Now I'm going to put a link in down below which is uh, to my website and particularly to a video where I'm introducing the background to what the Enchanted Lands is my ability to um, chat with the Unseen Realm and take direction from Archangel Metatron and Seraphina and a number of other beings. These beings are very much involved in uh, helping humanity to be the best versions of ourselves. And so um, we get kind of given a mission on each of these enchanted lands and we have a lot of fun and sacred inquiry um, along the way. So I'm going to share some of that with you today. So the directive for this one was from Archangel Metatron. He's a frequency of being who's involved in your ascension of you, your evolution. He's also involved in sacred geometry and um, placing, placing happenings in the right place at the right time and um, I don't want to waste your time going through all the history of that but as I say it's on my website if you're interested in the background please go and visit that first because some of this will then make a lot more sense. <laughs> Meanwhile okay so we were given the job of going to the Azores and the Azores are an archipelago of nine islands just off the coast of Portugal well quite a bit off the coast of Portugal actually in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. It's one of the places, and there are a number I know around the world, that has mythology connected with the civilization, ancient civilization of, of Atlantis. And um, I believe every single um, square inch centimeter of this planet has a frequency, all quite different from its neighbor. So when we go to these different places, we are entering a completely different makeup of energy. And the Azores, when I connected in, felt raw and uh, all of the um, constituents that you'd need for alchemy into uh, creation, into absolute creation. And they do say on the Azores that you can get all four seasons in a day. And we definitely experienced that. So I'll share that with you shortly. But our mission given from Metatron for this one was to go and connect in with Archangel Michael Line. Now, um, ley lines are uh, lines around the earth that produce a certain frequency or are at a certain frequency a bit like if any of you know the meridian system within the human body it goes back at least four thousand years that we know of and these are uh, energy um maps of the of the body well ley lines uh, dragon lines um there's all sorts of different names of grids that are associated with the planetary equivalent and there are two dragon lines, basically. They're called dragon lines. They're the biggest and the widest and the most strong. They intertwine in a, in a weave that go all the way around the middle of the planet. And um, it's fascinating. It's absolutely fascinating. But there's lots and lots and lots on the internet if you're interested in those. But we have done some work previously at St Michael's Mount in Cornwall where there is a line which is Archangel Michael's line and Mary's line and also actually Athena and Apollo that all meet at a certain place and go off to different parts of the world. So Metatron came through to me and said pick up the Michael line from where you last left it which is St Michael's Mount, follow it and where it lands, where it goes through the ocean and it lands on land, that is where you need to go next. 
So I mapped that out and basically it was the Azores and I was like, what are the Azores? <laughs> I had to look them up. <laughs> and uh, interestingly enough, of the nine islands, the ley line of St. Michael actually, or King of Michael, St. Michael, actually went through one of them and its name is San Miguel, which is Saint Michael, which you won't be surprised to hear, but I still get all tingly and excited about how these things line up. Now, our role there was to follow the line and to uh, work with connections really on the island with Archangel Michael and to pick up the dragon line, which is which comes in on this particular uh, frequency and energy, the female one of the earth, and to focus the energy from blue, which is, it's been for a very long time, into a gold energy. So every single colour has a vibration, has a frequency, it has a, a base frequency and a high frequency. And worse, they overlap quite often, but the frequency of gold is higher than the one of blue. In fact, between light blue and um, dark blue, you have purple and you've got white and silver and then you have gold. So that's the frequency of colours as they're measured. So we were asked to intend and to add our energy together in that harmony to uh, bring this about. The second quest was to uh, link in with some ethereal temples, particularly one that was to do with the planet Venus and Lady Venus and the most pure loving energy you can have. And ethereal temples are basically, so uh, mythology will tell us that in civilizations past, uh, where they were a little bit more advanced in some areas than we are now. Uh, there were certain temples that were used for the power of good for the whole planet and everything within it. And when certain civilizations fell, some of these were, were placed, if you like, in, in the ether. They were placed out of sight so no harm could be done. And there's quite a lot of work going on at the moment where some of these temples are coming back into the sight of people like myself who has clairvoyance and um, the energy is therefore then available for everybody to enjoy. So that was our second uh, quest, if you like. So we needed to find the place um, of Mirror Lakes where this could take place. So that was our adventure. Now, some wonderful people decided that they'd like to join in on this and as with all enchanted lands you just feel it you get this sense i call it a soul call i put out a soul call to say who's interested in this one who's aligned with this people may have had past lives um, and left things around the world and they need to go back to those physical places to actually absorb it. I totally understand and agree one can do that from a distance, but it does really, really make a massive difference if you use your physicality and your body too. So we met up at the Harmony Lodge in Mid Wales and we got on to, I've got some photos to share with you rather than just talk with you. And here's the first one. This is a video of us very early hours of the morning leaving to go off to the airport. Um, and various songs were playing on the radio and we were having a nice good giggle and a, and a sing-along. So there's always an air of um, excitement. There's an air of expectation and um, adventuring and just not knowing, not knowing. And, the, the ability to not know, not need to know, the ability to just love what is, is often a prerequisite. So we flew off direct from London to San Miguel and we settled in to an amazing place. But the first thing we needed to do is throw our cases in and go off and have a meal. Um, and this particular restaurant was on the seafront. Um, as some of you know, I just adore the oceans and it was really nice. It was blowing, it was raining, a gale was, go was going, so we all had our meal and then we went off to the sea. Now the moon was starting to get full 
um, because during our time uh, when we were staying there, it was due to be a full moon eclipse. I'll get to that shortly. Um, but yeah, so I was happy going paddling late at night in the dark. We did find out actually that there were some uh, Portuguese man of war jellyfish <laughs> around, but hey ho, we were fine. <laughs> so this next picture is a couple of our ladies walking through the Convento. Now the Convento is um, San, Fran San Francisco Convento, and it's at it's in a it's in a small village called um, Villa Franca de Campo. And uh, it was just a super best place we could have stayed. So it's an ancient um, place where the monks used to stay, uh, following St Francis of Assisi. And uh, yeah, basically, this was their place. And they've the owners have kept the original structure as much as possible. Lovely wide corridors, very high ceilings. And first thing the next morning, I get a knock on my door from Ellie. Uh, we'd arranged to actually meet just after breakfast so we could have our first collective session, set the tone for our adventures that we were planning on having or hoping. And um, she's like, Carol, Carol, Carol. And we got off and I was blurry eyed, like, wow, 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 what are we doing? And um, she'd found this stairway. <laughs> <laughs> and then up to this roof which was amazing and you can see uh, the inner cloisters and uh, that's another one of the convento which was amazing just take you through these so there's a short selection um, this is from one of the roof terraces just to give you a flavour. On this next video, I'd like you to introduce you um, to the owner, basically. This lady's father-in-law um, used to own the Convento. He passed away four years ago and she's now um, in guardianship. Absolutely wonderful lady and she's trying to restore it in its um in the manner in which she feels it needs to be it needs to be kept leonora is her name and i'd love to share just this three minute video with you about um the concepts behind this most wonderful convent so all the cloisters have this symbolic meaning that is the square is the representative of the earth the mm -hmm. circle that you see in the fountain up the upper circle is representative of heaven and this mm -hmm. is a place where the alliance of heaven and earth spirit and matter uh, the fountain represents the fountain of life from genesis that's the four sacred rivers come out from the four mouths of the angels mm -hmm. that go to the four cardinals of the world as you see, south, north, east, west. The fountain is an octagonus. Octagonus, as in the Bible, eight. Well, six, the sixth day was the end of creation. The seventh was the rest day. And the eighth day was the end of creation, the beginning of all. Eight represents also the infinitive, the yes. infinite. So the first the first, uh, how do you say? Sign. Um, uh, 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 elevation. The first level, you can see 12 windows. Three, 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 three. And that is 12 apostles. Yes. Or it can be, well, the Trinity. Trinity. Mm. <laughs> well, lots of there trinities. are lo lots yes. of players. Yes, there are <laughs> indeed. <have> <laughs> Because it, it's also in Egyptian, in the Egyptian uh, wisdom, there are four pyramids in a human, in a human, that is the body pyramids, the soul pyramids, and then the two pyramids of body and soul that come together. So there are four pyramids, each three represents one, 
the archways are 16, that is double, double to the eight, 16 doors to heaven or, well, everything has mm. a meaning here. Yeah. And in this stone, that is still a mystery to be unfolded, as I say. You cannot see them now, but I saw them first in February. Spirals. You can just pass around. There are an Italian gel who just came here and they see, he said it was natural oh spirals. It, was, it is not man-made. And some, in February, February, they appeared in this stone. A cousin of mine take, took a picture of this. This is the stone of that spirals, but they were more. They were February more. this year. Yes. Is it like, was yeah. it like three spirals? Like more. That? More than three. Oh, so isn't that interesting that right at the end there she's talking about miracles um, and how they just naturally appear. Lots of things that, you know, a miracle is something you just can't explain, but it is a true provable happening. So this was a lovely place to just sit and be and enjoy the view over the gardens and out to sea. And this very important is our breakfast table. <laughs> I wanted to share this one with you because there were a set of trees which um, the manager thought were about 60 years old and uh, my Portuguese is was rubbish and uh, we managed to communicate here with lots of hand signals uh, but he basically said it was a type of maple and this is how they are just as they begin to open up and, and start to show their leaves. So this is a view basically from on top of the roof and across the lovely, lovely little village out to sea. So there's the swimming pool we could use and these are the gardens. So this was the roof that we were um, happily playing on and then I just thought I wonder what's up at the top and you could actually walk up these steps and stand right at the top. This is beautiful Ellie and Anne. Here I am at sunrise. <laughs> Others following, and that's our view right from the top. This was wonderful. So this is Jill and Chris, who have just stuck their heads out at the right time. <laughs> on one of the balconies where we held some of our gatherings. And you can see in the background also quite a lot of greenhouses. Um, quite a lot of the Azores, um, they have lots of greenhouses where they grow pineapples. And we had that for breakfast every single morning, which was amazing. It was quite, uh, they were quite um, mild and very juicy. So this is where we gathered when we were working in the Convento, we had this absolutely a wonderful room and space that uh, was just ours and you can see the light flooding in from the outside balcony quite often on our retreats we do meet we want to process and we call them circles it's just to gather basically and set our intent for the day um, go through our experiences uh, get clarity on what we're feeling and what we're sensing and how our intuition is developing, how our heart is opening. That's inside one of the greenhouses for your pineapples. So on our first trip uh, we were guided by Nico and his company and uh, one of the first places we went to was a church called La Paz and um, 
it's almost like, as you can see there, a pilgrimage in itself to go up the many steps and, and winding and spiralling staircase. That's the view at the top. This is Anne. Some babies. So this is the full name of De Paz Chapel, 16th century rebuilt in 1764 this obviously it's a very volcanic and they have quite a lot of eruptions and various things of the volcanoes in this area so there's lots of stories about that the 10 landings of the staircase built in 1968 represents the lord's prayers of the joyful and the sorrowful mysteries and the steps represent the respective hail marys corresponding to two-thirds of the rosary so this is us lot just basically taking our time, winding our way up and then on the way down, winding our way down in the opposite direction. So in a way it was it was like our DNA, like planting and walking our own spiral of existence. <laughs> Happy places we're out and about right at the top with a well. All beautiful views of people and this is really interesting. One of the reasons we went to this particular church is because I'm always very very interested in legends and mythology and you know where's the truth of it and how does it begin? So this one had a very interesting legend of Our Lady of Peace. Some little shepherds were herding their flock up the hill when they found in a simple grotto a small image of the Holy Virgin. They told the clergy about the happening and soon after the little image was carried to the Mother Church of St Michael. The Archangel, however, next day the Arch uh, Michael, St Michael the Archangel. However, next day the image appeared once more in the rustic niche up the hill, where in a suitable place the building of a chapel was started. But later that night the layered foundations were miraculously relocated to a place nearby the simple grotto, where the image was first sighted by the little shepherds. The will of the lady was evident, therefore the construction proceeded and soon the small chapel was built, most cherished by popular devotion. So that's really, really interesting because um, it was actually our driver who told us about this and about how many people, local people, really believe this to be true. It's a short video of, of us descending again after our ascension. So it's really quite important when we're away that we actually are mindful. We live in very much a mindfulness energy into the now and we, we attempt to bring that sacredness, that love, that fun, that laughter to every present moment. So again, this is a, a photograph of the village and this is a beautiful island, uh, just again volcanic. It's a crater basically in, in the sea just opposite the village and lots of people go snorkeling here. And I don't know if you can see, but there's a um, the sort of tower just behind there is actually where the Red Bull uh, jumping championships happen each year. Uh, where people actually jump off that. <laughs> so all of the Azores, the islands are rich in its um, and lush and tropical in nature and uh, just the fauna and flora is just magnificent. So lots and lots of waterfalls everywhere. We took our advantage basically first of all after we'd been up to the church is uh, we decided to go to a village called Furness and Furness is very famous for its lake they call it the fire lake the Furness lake and it's also very very famous for um, thermal uh, springs in that area where you can go and actually seep your 
heat of Mother Earth into your bones. And it's also really famous for the sulfur pits, which we were a little bit, oh, what's that going to be like? But it wasn't that strong a smell as I've experienced in different parts of the world. Um, and these, this was the little wood that we needed to walk through in order to get there. Lichen on trees is a form of really, really, really clear air, unpolluted. So we always take the chance of just connecting in with nature, not rushing, just being, serving that connection in whatever way feels right for us. Everybody's free to do whatever they feel is right for them. I just loved these tree roots. So this is the pathway through the bubbling furnaces and we wanted to go and see it because we were set to have a meal later on in the village of Furness in one of the restaurants that actually um, this gives you an idea actually of the of the bubbling some of them were, were definitely beyond boiling point uh, that's Chris so these pits here are where a huge pan has been filled with all manner of you can have a vegetarian option or you can have a meat option most of the time it's the meats, various sorts of meats and cabbage and other vegetables. And they're all thrown in this, well, I'm sure they're placed carefully, in this pot. And then they're left there for Mother Earth to actually cook your food for five hours. And then you get little um, signposts about which restaurants it's going to go to. And this one was our restaurant. This is Nico and his friend who helps him over the weekend. It's our tour guide, very, very informative, very relaxed, very flexible, which is useful in our group because we're, we're a bit like, we think we're going to do this today, but oh, what's down there and oh, can we do this and various other things. Here we are just being and uh, many people saw various butterflies and moths and dragonflies around. We actually went on shortly after that to the tropical gardens, which um, are a few hundred years old now. And there was a private villa built and thermal baths built. Um, and many trees collected from around the world over a few hundred years, this being one of them. It was a pure delight just to gather under this tree. That gives you some idea of size. And the beautiful, restful tropical gardens, which were absolutely superb. You get an idea with this photograph or video of the lush um, tropical nature. There's so many natural parks on these islands. And this is us lot in one of them. So we decided to try uh, the sort of small ones and larger ones. And we decided to try um, a few of them, as you can see. Now, this was the largest one, which was in front of the villa and it was circular. It's the only fully circular one we entered. And it's got a huge amount of copper, as you can see from the colour. And this was the place where we really, you know, some of these things aren't planned. It's just sort of, it feels right to do this now. It feels right to do that. We follow our intuition all of the time. And this was the place that some of the girls decided to move into a circle and we joined them. And this is the place where we connected in with the ley line energy and the dragon energy. And we focused on its change from blue to gold to a higher consciousness of existence to the vibration of five fifth and higher dimension which means we all act in unity we can be our unique selves in our own leadership of our own life knowing our limitations and our strengths and equally turn up to this circle of life and join in with a united front for uh, peace miracles happiness health whatever it means to you.
We had, I'll take you back for a moment though, we had quite an interesting experience because we did close our eyes while we were focusing on this intent and many people in the group when they opened their eyes felt that the colours had gone much brighter and turned to more of a gold um, at the end of this dedication of quest and service. Now guys, talking about the meal, <laughs> that's what it looks like, okay? So apparently it tasted a lot better than it looks, um, but some of you might think that looks. There's all sorts of, of sausages in there as well as chicken and beef and pork and all sorts. So some people tried that and we took that as a blessing from Mother Earth. This is Nick very happy having some leftovers <laughs> take home. Uh, throughout the Azores, they have wonderful spring water. I mean, it's lush in all the elements, uh, but they're just everywhere. So you don't need to buy the bottled water. You can just go and have this filtered from Mother Earth. We made our way up high so we could see the lake from above. And, you know, one of the things uh, all of the Azores is known for are the flowers. The azaleas were out in full force when we were there. But apparently June is the month to go if you want to see uh, blue hydrangeas everywhere. Each island is known as a colour as well, which is really interesting. Uh, this island of San Miguel is known as the Green Island. I think you can see why. So that's the village uh, that we were just in before collecting our water and having our lunch, our furnace. And you can see just here, which is where the sulphur pits were, where our meal was cooked. And this, sh this little forest that we went through, wood we went through, we shared with you. We were told that if you plant anything in October, it will flower. Uh, the next season. We managed to fit in that day a visit to a tea factory and it's one of the oldest in Europe and it's been continuation with one family for a very long time and it's all organic and we were treated to a tour and this is actually how they grow the tea brushes. Apparently you have to let them grow for a good six years before you can take the first cutting. And this gives you an idea of its setting. And the first cutting is, is premium tea. And the difference between green and black tea is just about how much it's le left out uh, to oxidize. Absolutely beautiful. Lots of us had samples. This is Ellie showing you, Nick and I, trying um, various teas there, which was lovely. We bought some uh, local honey and various, anything we could get our hands on that, were lo that was local. So that was our, our first day really. And over that evening, about 3, 3.15, something like that in the morning, the moon was set to go full lunar eclipse. So we needed to take that opportunity. I invited people if they wanted to, to sleep in or to come and join me out on the veranda for a good moment, half hour of silence. And in the middle of that would be the peak of the eclipse. Now for us, it was very cloudy and it was stormy and raining. But once we settled into we prepared beforehand and then we, when we settled into it outside, the winds did ease. So we lit our candle. Candles are great, you know, it gives you the opportunity of focusing on the light of the day. It gives you the opportunity of bringing light into any, any parts of darkness within yourself. It gives you the opportunity for a dedication or a wish or a prayer. So here's a short video of us leading and saying together affirmations because, you know, your own body and mind follows your own voice more than any other. 
Um, so if you say things out loud, you are taking part in honouring that witnessing and that request that you're putting out into life and full moons are well known for manifestation portals so it's a fabulous time to um, enter into that relationship with our celestial bodies of our universe and then this is us lot coming in wet blown about glad to get back inside but also <laughs> amazed by the quality of the experience that we had. The blessings that we sent everybody for peace and for the light to find you. So as always, we gathered in circle after that just to have a natter about what our um, experiences were. And then we're on to another day. So after just a few hours sleep, um, we were due to go out and see the whales. And um, one of the reasons for going was to have experiences with the whales. But most people during our time couldn't get out because uh, the storms were so high and the seas were so rough that no boats were going out. So, after a morning speaking to Leonora, we basically, um, she looked out of the window and she was showing us round and she said the fire mountain's clear and the fire mountain is the highest mountain on the island and quite often it's, it's shrouded in cloud all of the time. But on that particular morning, it wasn't. So she recommended we go that day up to the fire mountain to see the fire lake and to see it's like a whole 360 view of the whole island from there it is the place to go and um is the most heaven, heaven, heavenly place because it's up high from her view and um she spoke to us about two things she recommended we go and have this experience to be up in the heavens which is usually uh cloudy and also to go to the waterfall of the Great Mother. And the waterfall of the Great Mother is where there's a figure of a face in the rock, which again, locals say is the Great Mother, it's Mother Earth, it's Gaia. Some believe it's Mary. So of course, flexibility is our friend. So we arrange that and off we went. So this is ours at the highest point of the island. And this is us having a, a sing along. Music and dancing is never far away in celebration totally of life in all its glory. Some of the views to share with you. So after that windy and cool experience on top of the mountains, of course, we needed then to warm ourselves to the bone, didn't we? So we discovered an amazing tropical place where they had even hotter thermal pools to experience. This is all about connection with the rawness and the, uh, and the full experience of the elements and Mother Earth. We've been speaking about the Fabinici sequence the day before and the ferns were good examples of that. So here we are in one of the pools. Just look at the surroundings. So it's really interesting if I go back to that one that we felt really blessed that day. We just felt like after the work and the quest, part of our quest of, of the dragon ley lines, that we were just bathing in those qualities. And it's really interesting when you do some spiritual work that the quality of your sight, the quality of how you feel, the quality of how you hear the world, it changes in many different ways and it becomes much clearer and we just had the time that day to experience wonderful things and to honour that really. 
So after this beautiful warmth, we decided to try and find this waterfall of the mother. And some of us crazy people decided to go and swim in the bottom of the waterfall. So Nick reckons it's sort of like 30 meters up here. And I don't know if you can see, but this is the face, two eyes, nose and the mouth of the mother. And they believe that the mother is blessing the flow of water. So here again, her face. And I spotted this one with the nose and the mouth, which is a guardian. Often when you get um, a deity or you get some high vibration forming within uh, naturally forming within Mother Nature, you know, whether it's clouds or rocks or pools, you often have guardians with them. So there's more of a close-up of who they believe. The Mother is, Mother Earth, blessing the waters. So of course some of us decided this would be lovely to be blessed by these waters. Um, quite a lot of the locals were hanging around and other visitors and they all thought we were absolutely bonkers. Um, but actually when you swum in the North Sea this was warm in comparison. <laughs> and we each took turn to actually go underneath the full force of the water to be blessed. So here's a video that gives you an idea of what we experienced. There's quite a lot of um, shrieking <laughs> and happiness during our adventure. Honest to goodness me, when we got back to the Convento after that day, we were really, really satiated with Mother Earth. And we went back and everybody had fires in their room and they'd lit them for us. So we had the most amazing fires. This is the room uh, which apparently is called the Bishop's Room, uh, which is the room Nick and I uh, were given. And there's a, a drawing above it, which uh, they say isn't a very good one, but it's actually the sign of the wolf and the dove, which is the sign of St. Francis. And I don't know if you can see, but to me, that definitely looks like a little dragon's head and wings and tail. So we felt like the dragons were there. We were blessed uh, by St. Francis and everything to do with nature and warmed, warmed all the way through in a different way, having gone warm through to the bone in the thermals, which are the hottest pools we'd experienced, then cold in the waterfall and then the fires. So really deep, deep, deep elemental experience. Because we couldn't get out to the whales, we wanted to just literally be there to give a blessing, give our thanks, um, and to offer our hearts in some way. And so this was the fabulous veranda that was just outside our room where we gathered and we, we decided we'd do it from here which was most splendid in the sunshine. Okay, so uh, we have some free time where everybody could go off and do whatever it was they wanted to do. And one of the things I wanted to do was find Archangel Michael's church in the village where the ley line had its epicenter and ran through, and this is it. And it's not every day that you actually have a whole altar just built to Archangel Michael. There was due to be, there was a festival of miracles, a festival of Christ of miracles, a festival of peace um, at the end of our week. So during the week in the churches, we were seeing them uh, prepare the flowers and the various vestiges that would be used. And there you have Archangel Michael with his sword of truth. standing for light. We found these everywhere in every village. Um, it was phenomenal. They, they used uh, on every pavement various uh, wonderful pictures basically. 
Oh, I had to show you this. This is the Azorian dog. And forgive me, I have forgotten its name, but the owners, uh, the managers that looked after us in the Convento had one. So one of the days we went out, um, this is our day where we were going to Seti Sadades, which is the seven cities. And this is where the, the, the uh, myths tie into the seven cities of Atlantis. And so we knew the second part of our quest was to um, bring in that Venus energy. We prepared in the morning, we went to have a really good day. And our guides were a different company this day and they took us, first of all, we had a stop off at this aqueduct and uh, it was built by the Romans and we thought it was amazing. So we got out and had a little look through and there's some information if you want to have a read of that later. And the forest behind. So this was our first gathering point when we stopped off at Seti Sadades. It's a point where there is a green lake on one side and a blue on the other. So that's the village. And we just knew this was the place for our temple work to be done. All over the island is ginger, wild ginger. It's got to be a bit of a challenge for them actually, they're getting rid of it. You can see this was definitely a Jeep tour as we went off the beaten track quite a lot. And these are the lakes. So here you have one lake and over in the distance there is a bridge and you have the other lake. So this is the point where we did our ceremony. We zoomed in a little bit just to show you the various uh, ways that quite a lot of the islanders have stone walls or plant walls to um, shelter from the wind as they grow all of their crops. Quite steep cliffs. And this was us after we'd done our ceremony. So um, this was the point where we really connected in with the most loving part of ourselves that we could and um, invited that ethereal temple of Lady Venus into reality. So really loved up after this one. And then we went after the heights, we go down again. So it's all in a wave all of the time. We were in waves, spirals, just beautiful. So there you have the blue lake and there you have the green. So this is the bridge that I pointed out earlier for you. Uh, so I'll just take you back there for a moment. So there's your blue lake and there's your green. and some happy and very contented people. And again, we were taken off to have a local lunch where the locals eat. Nick put this little map up for you to give you some idea of scale. We're over here. After lunch, we visited this very simple country church because it's called St Nicholas. And it was amazing actually because Chris and Jill decided that they'd really like to make a head start while we were bringing up the rear as it were. And uh, just as Chris sat in the church and Jill was walking up through the trees, the bells started. So this is inside. And that's a really good example about following your own intuition because there's always something wonderful that we align with when we do so. It's representative of the seven cities, seven lakes, seven possibilities, bits of paradise. Oh, this is an example of an early blooming blue hydrangea, uh, which as I say, we were a little bit early for, but we definitely saw some of them. Now, one of our options um, was to uh, go to Meteorus, and I had a really strong, really strong pull to this area of ancients. Um, 
a strong pull of ancients is where it's your ancestors, where there's something we need to be interact with on a much higher dimensional level uh, to bring into this reality. The day was stormy and strong and Mother Nature was really, really, oh, it's just so vibrant. And I wanted to share some of the natural uh, cliffs and natural shoreline that we experienced. Now, we were in two vehicles for all of these tours and you just need to remain flexible when you're out doing all of these things with the Enchanted Lands. And we ended up doing quite a lot together and then there were times when just some of us ended up being together where a body of work needed to be done. So blessings were actually offered, connections, noticing um, uh, really deep earth messages that I passed on to people as we went through. So there's a, a bit of a headland jutting out here that I felt we needed to go and have a look because I was reminded very much of when we were in the Redlands in Arizona on Hopi territory at a place there where they called it the Hoodoos. And in Hopi language, the Hoodoos means ancestors in stone form, that the ancestors have been, uh, are, are present in the very fabric of Earth. Elements of water and earth and air and fire all meeting as one. You might be able to see a couple of eyes, nose and mouth here. When you find, when you find a place that feels very powerful and very, very old, it's worth stopping and just sinking into your boots and just checking out what it is because you'll be able to, life reveals itself to you when you take the time to do that. So we decided in our wisdom, in this beautiful ring of fire, a beautiful ring of ancient stone that was once um, a volcanic, uh, well it still is volcanic isn't it, but where there was no water previous and it was a circle of stone, a circle, circles of, when you get natural circles it invites the human into ceremony and pilgrimage. So we decided to really connect in with the whales, with Neptune, um, especially one of our group who has a real good connection, uh, and we decided to go for it. So as we were doing that, the waters came in massively and we all got soaked. It was fantastic. I wanted to show this one with you because I think it's really funny. So sometimes when we're out sharing um, our experiences, we do so in a, in a group. And sometimes I just need to sort of um, have individual moments with people to uh, do some more loving work. Oh, now to finish this day off, basically, what we had hoped to do was um, there's this place and this is it where we can have the opportunity of going in the ocean and it's warmed by the thermals so like a warm ocean can you imagine that so the ocean it's not by the sun it's from deep within mother earth well when we got there it was a bit choppy um, and it wasn't possible but the girls found this like thermal spout that you could stand near and of course I stood a bit too near because um, yeah I got completely soaked uh, but it was warm and lovely and that's there trying to hold me up so this was the spout and it came up and just completely soaked us but I don't know if you can see behind these are the the uh, ladders the railings and the ladders that go into this beautiful beautiful like thermal seawater pool uh, wasn't for us that day I'm glad to say that when we finished the part of the retreat in San Miguel before some of us flew off flew off to Flores the or Flourish as they say um, for our second part we um, left the girls for a, for a day uh, to just you know have some fun and do whatever they wanted and I'm so so pleased literally a few days later uh, Natalie and Emma managed to go back this is what I mean by 
four seasons in a day. And this is how we might have had experience of it, but at least a couple of us did so. And this is how it worked. It was a real new foundation of unity consciousness. So every other Enchanted Lands that we do is going to take on this epicness, really. Um, it's a new level, new base. And so it was really lovely that some of the girls actually went off and completed various things that we weren't able to do as a group. So you can see the railings down there, look, how different it is. Now, with every single Enchanted Lands that we've done, when we have completed, whatever the weather is, wherever we are in the world, when we've completed our job of work, as it were, when we've completed our mission, our quest, we always get rainbows. And this rainbow appeared very early in the morning and stayed for hours and hours and hours. So everybody, everybody could see it and you can see the trees remember that first night's view of the trees in the courtyard the other thing that most of us didn't manage to do is get out on the waters but jill and chris got out and this is a sperm whale that is a sperm whale it's the best photographs we can give you of the experience but jill and chris really enjoyed it and they were accompanied by dolphins too. So again, some of us managed it. One of the things I, I loved was this, this, it's the timing of things. When Archangel Metatron says you need to go then and do this, it's kind of like, okay, there's no wiggle room. And what we just, what we found out later was, well, after we booked it and done all of these things, that there, there's, <laughs> Uh, it's the second biggest festival across the world, basically, is the festival of Christ of Miracles that I mentioned earlier in the Peace of Dove, the, the peace um, that doves represent. And it was in Ponta Delgada, which this is the photograph of the gates of Ponta Delgada as you enter from the marina. And it's the main city in San Miguel and thousands of people come back home to San Miguel for this weekend from all over the world. So what that meant to us was the changes that we'd made, the changes that we'd uh, been instructed and had followed and done to the best of our ability, were now able to be shared with the many around the world via this weekend festival. With any festival, there's always flowers, and I thought this was wonderful on the towers. And how the ladies would get together and the gentlemen with the flowers and use these frames to make them and complete them. Isn't that gorgeous? This is me. Having completed our first part on San Miguel, feeling very comfortable, satiated, satisfied that uh, our work there was done and uh, leaving the girls to go and have some fun as six of us flew off. This is actually flying over Seti Zadardes where the temple of Lady Venus was. This is uh, flying over an island called Pico where they make the most amazing wine and lots of marine biologists go there because you can go for whale trips from there too. This is the highest uh, mountain on the islands and they actually say it's only a couple of meters shorter than Everest because most of that mountain is below sea level. Now this is the apartments you couldn't have got two opposites. We were in an ancient convent for the first week and for these four days we ended up into a brand new block of, of um, self-catering accommodation uh, which worked out I thought really really well. So this is Flourish as they call it Flores. Now the colour of Flores is um, the pink island. And really, interestingly enough, we've been to the Green Island and this was the Pink Island and both of the colours of the heart. And one of the soul calls to come along on this particular trip was all to do with courage of the heart. We needed to have anybody who came needed to be courageous of heart energy. 
it was very ethereal on our arrival um, and this was the the volcanic rocks of this of the ocean right outside our apartments the very next day we went on a tour with an amazing uh, guide and um, Francisco he was amazing and um, he said basically we have seven lagoons so again here's that holy number of seven seven lagoons and we were honestly we're so looked after when we go to these places so so looked after because we saw all seven and when we were talking to the locals afterwards that was like ooh, not heard of it's very very unusual but we just took some photographs because we went so high we were above the cloud level and these are just some of the majestic um, sights as the as the clouds shifting from the valley floors and there's the ocean behind and our wonderful guide who knew so much about the botanics it's a, a biosphere it's a protected whole island is protected absolutely stunning so you know we're high up we've got all the beautiful wildflowers and things around us and this whole mountain range of <laughs> waterfalls down to the sea. And basalt. So they reckon these have a real link with the Giant's Causeway in Ireland. Um, made of the same ancient rock. Same um, ancient rock actually at Fingal's Cave off um, on the island of Staffa off Scotland. Uh, our next retreat actually is up there in October if anyone's interested and uh, we hope to go on a boat trip uh, to see Fingal's Cave on Staffa. We'll see. So you can see look from a distance and this is the road that wiggles by it so along our wiggly road just stunning pictures never really do it justice do they we just had this basically for us it was just an arrival day where we could uh, connect with the locals with their local heritage and stories and see that that's the green lake and that's the blue lake so the only two islands that have this phenomena are the two we visited. No hydrangeas this time, yellow. So this is um, uh, Larges and one of the villages where it has a big marina that actually the seawall came down <laughs> a few years ago uh, that they're rebuilding. This is one of their churches that we entered. We loved this vaulted ceiling of wood. A beautiful stained glass window with the dove, sign of the dove. And this door was actually all made from a shipwreck that um, landed on the island the same year as Titanic had its experience of disappearing. But this was um, all rescued from a shipwreck and reused. The Mirror Lake. Uh, this is an island called Corvo, which is one of the smallest islands out of the archipelago. You can have a day trip over there. Often a lot of the, I mean, this is a slightly disused one, but often the roofs were made of these tiles. And Christine Golak was telling us that the way they used to make them was you would you would get the clay and then you would slap it down on your thigh <laughs> which is interesting because they're all different shapes if you have a look they're different they're different sizes depending on what what your thigh was like so oh, that was amazing those are lilies all around the cows are just left to wander so you know most of the traffic jams were just cows mooching about on the on the roads. Now, I'd had a vision before we went of a place where there was a deep, deep, deep moss, old ancient moss that grew with 
juniper um, trees and we mentioned this and he found it, he, he took us to it. So this moss, we buried our face in it actually, <laughs> holds about 10 times its own weight in water. And the magic of this moss, which is called sorghum moss, just having to check my notes there. And uh, yeah, the juniper. And this gives you an idea of scale. And it just went on for such a long time. So for moss lovers, this is the place to go, for sure. So more vistas for you. Oh, this was really interesting because this was our guide, Francisco. He took us to his village where he was brought up. And this is his village he was brought up in. And this house over here is his nan's. And that's where he was mostly brought up with his nan in that house there. It's the backdrop of his upbringing. So you can see there the village and this backdrop of the waterfalls going down into the ocean. So we returned back to our villas at the end of our tour day and there's a local beautiful waterfall that you are allowed to swim in at the base of that one in the village of Faja Grand and here's a video to share with you of our walk up there um, and our time just being with the elements and the sun had come out. There are lots of wagtails. One other thing that they did extremely well over there is they love jumping in off rocks into the oceans. Um, and uh, they, they have natural ocean pools. So they will build um, access points to little beaches and uh, ledges where you can actually go for a swim so that you're not into the main ocean you're protected by all of the rocks around you i nicknamed this the mermaid's pool that's just to prove i actually got in <gasps> so very different landscape from uh previous it's one of the sunsets and now we'll pause this here for a moment because the work to do on Flourish, what we were asked to do there was connecting with the Divine Feminine to access heaven on earth and just be, be restored, be healed, be connected as deeply as we possibly could with the fundamentals of life. And so we did this, um, which is basically a walk up to some amazing um, waterfalls that go down. Um, it's Ribiera de Ferrari, which I've probably mispronounced, but basically it's uh, a lagoon um, that is a container for the most amazing waterfalls that come down and the feel of the place is just astonishing. And many of us felt it was a version of heaven on earth. We took this day very slowly to walk up. It was very slippy and uh, we just needed to be totally and utterly aware of every single footstep on our way up and coming down. So it gave us the opportunity to go inwards, to take this as a real, the deepest connection we possibly could. So that's the beginning of the pathway. And what was wonderful is they'd left a load of walking sticks, which we all definitely needed to get up there on this pathway. It was just, it's the definitely the sort of place where we just felt we were totally in Mother Earth's alchemical pool of creation. And every now and again, we'd intuitively stop to 
connect in because there's always gateways there's always gateways on any path that you take and they can be trees that bend over that mean a certain thing they can be uh, water that travels in a certain way uh, they can be trees um, they can be as I'm doing here in this particular video where uh, the wind picks up in a different way I listen connect in thank the air air element so it's just really lovely a pilgrimage is just being really extremely aware of who you are where you are and the connection between you and the world this was an archway that felt it was to do with relationships so as we walked under we were very focused on that uh, whether that's relationship for ourselves or each other we were also given a chant that was really interesting because it wasn't um, it often were given chance to uh, give back and bless and we I thought this chant was basically to offer the divine feminine when we got to the lagoon but it wasn't needed it was literally just a moment of reflection and uh, guardianship and connection whilst we were walking up lots of different flora and as you, as you might tune into that there are all these sort of markings on the rocks now that felt really different like a really different part of the whole thing this is always really interesting because whenever you get man that comes along to help build something that connects in with nature, there's a beautiful um, symmetry, there's a beautiful connection that happens. And it's what they call a magical portal. Um, my guide Matilda came in and we did a very old uh, ceremony from the olden days there. There's me channeling Matilda and letting everybody know what to do should they wish and onwards and upwards we go so here we walk through the last part this felt like a dragon's uh, tree from the other side you can't see it from this side and we finally arrived to this amazing place that felt so uh, much like heaven on earth and we just took our time just to be I mean, they say it's seven waterfalls. We counted 22, which is one of Serafina's numbers. Uh, I suppose it depends on the day and how much rain's falling as to what you see. Japanese redwoods uh, were all around. They use that to build some houses and to ship out. It's one of their commodities. There was a guardian there who asked us not to go in the lagoon as they hold it as sacred despite our needs and wants. <laughs> and what was absolutely astonishing, we saw a wonderful heron, um, number of herons there. And then Martin uh, was talking about fishing and well, there's the heron. Has Nick taken all our photographs for us? Turn in flight. Look at how calm it is and how mirrored it is. Easily, easily able to scry from there. Just being, absorbing, completing our mission, if you like. One of the things I've mentioned before is when you're in very special places, often nature will show itself and our ancestors and the beings and earth spirits. I don't know if you can see here the face in the rock, two eyes, nose and mouth that seem very clear to us after we've done our blessings and connection with the Divine Feminine. These started to show themselves to us. And as always, as we've mentioned before, when we've completed what it is that we go to do, we have a rainbow. Last but not least, I just wanted to share with you, because Nick and I stayed on Flourish when some of the, um, our group went on to different islands to do different things. 
one of the things I really wanted to do was the coastal path and this is the coastal path and you go through some plants and it goes on up here um, we did see a sign that said it wasn't really open that day um, but we we managed some of it as you can see here that's Nick wondering whether it's a good idea because it was rather steep and there were a few few landfalls around but we did some of it and it was lovely and then we came back down to the village and just enjoyed the magic of the light of the earth of the water of the air and of spirit and there you have it our enchanted lands complete of the Azores thank you for your time I really look forward to your comments below if there's any questions on any of this I am very pleased to do my best to answer lots of love everybody bye for now